I'm still in shock. We reached peak track. I might not be on this pod tomorrow. I think I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow with me or with you or really with anything on this planet. Because after what Sidney McLaughlin did, the 400-meter hurdles, I don't know where we go from here Yeah, as a human race. We may have come to the end of the road. Yes. Peak track. Peak track. Peak civilization. I 50.68. I thought she'd break the world record. I thought that was a guarantee. Yes. We thought, I, I, sub 51, that sounds crazy to say out loud, but maybe. But then she ran 56.8. 50.68, 50.68. She managed somehow to exceed expectations of her again. She did another Tokyo performance again. But it was bigger than a Tokyo performance. It was, she added to the performance that was supposed to be the big jump forward, not just for, for her, but for the event as a whole. What would she have been able to run slower than 5068 that you would have been like, oh my God? I still would have been, oh my God, with 50.99. I know some people were saying, well, I thought 50.8, 50.9, but this is crazy. If it said 50 on the clock, I would have lost my mind. I did not think that we would have reached the end of track, though. Now I feel like <laughs> we're at the end of track. I mean, there's so many stats you can throw out with this race. Obviously, she would have beat two people in the open four, which we've talked about. Um, she's now 0.9 seconds, almost a full second ahead of number two all time, right? Because she's now oh, like way up in the top of the, she's occupying all the top spots now. Um, you could look it up as has it compared to other performances, right? Points tables all time. But in terms of the race itself, when did you know it was over? And then from a competitive standpoint, and then when did you know that she was going to run something? otherworldly i knew it was over by around 200 meters i knew it's gonna be oh, like i i stopped watching her run when she got to like the eighth hurdle when she was on the home stretch yeah and just my eyes went straight to the clock yeah i was just staring at the, the clock and be like is it gonna like i'm not gonna lie part of me was thinking is it gonna land at 49 yeah like that was my that's what my brain was thinking it's like wait a minute because when you see her with such a big lead over Delilla and Themke, you're like, you don't build this big of a lead on those two athletes. You don't build a 10 meter lead on two of the greatest that have ever run in this sport. With the, the two greatest. The two greatest. Running, well, running two of the, because Sydney is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But you don't build that big of a lead with this late in the, this early into the race or late into the race. I don't know, whatever you want to say. Yeah. But as soon as I saw that big lead and I was like, the race is over. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. She is not trying to win this. She's trying to destroy the world record. My eyes went right to the clock. I was staring <laughs> at it. I was like, is this going to be 49? And I just shouted out like, holy shit. And we saw 50, 68. I knew it was over earlier about hurdle two. I thought yeah. this is, this is curtains. Cause she was, you know, even with Muhammad and then bull was back and just, have we ever seen Sydney break down? No. In a race and rarely if ever. In terms of speed, yeah, it was when she hit that coming off the curve with 100 to go, and you could see the gap then. I knew she was ahead, but you see the gap. And I'm thinking in my head, Bull and Lilla both can't be running that slow. Correct. And she has an ocean between her. <laughs> and The whole Willamette River basically could have fit between where Sydney was running and then where the two trying to chase after her are. And in the other previous you know, record runs, Muhammad's been close. Muhammad's been in the neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, not at, not at the most recent trials, but um, you go back to trials last year, Tokyo, like there was someone in the mix. So to see that big a gulf, there's just like, there was no way Femke Bull and Dylan Muhammad were running like 54 or something. So I was like, I knew they were running fast. And um, I was still stunned though. When I saw the clock, it was just completely out of this world. Uh, I was thinking back to two years ago, three years ago, 2019, when the world record started falling in the event, Muhammad beat McLaughlin at the U.S. Championships in Des Moines. And I remember talking to Muhammad after. He said, I think, I think sub-52 is possible. And I was like, whoa, sub-52, that would be crazy. Well, we kicked through that door last year in Tokyo. And now we're down to 50 points. It's like so crazy how much it's improved in just a couple of years. It's just 
it's one of the greatest track and field performances of all time. I mean, people are going to go through the history books. They'll have the benefit of a little more time. We were recording this right after, but just off the top of my head, I mean, 50.68. We The Warholm and Sydney performances were pretty similar last year and the second place performances and third place. Those events kind of mirrored each other last year. So imagine if on the other night, the men's formula hurdles, if someone ran a 45-1 or a 44-9 or something yeah. like that, it was just the level – that she went up. I mean, most times you take not just individuals, but an event, it makes a giant leap forward and then people chip away at it. Like just, she just took a full on jackhammer to this thing and kept going. Like, as you said, this was a big, another enormous jump forward. The event is just in a completely different realm than it was even, you know, a year and a half ago. So when you see something like this, you see a 5068, it's really hard for your brain to comprehend because it's not normal to break a record this much in this short of a track in yeah. a 400. Like, yeah. it, that's not normal. You're like, all right, so how is this possible? Sydney is a human, right? She's like any other of the great track athletes out there. But what is different about Sydney that is able to go to this incredible level that we haven't seen, you know? And I was thinking, is this like the equivalent? I mean, I was throwing around ideas. Is like, would this be like the equivalent of – a Sonia Richards Ross running the 400 hurdles or a Usain Bolt running the 110 hurdles or a Wade Van Niekirk running the 400 hurdles, like an all time great sprinter in a certain event just happens to, instead of focusing on the flat version of that event, yeah. focus on the hurdle version. Because I think we're basically seeing one of the greatest 400 meter flat runners who decided to specialize yes. Yes. in the hurdles as yeah. opposed to specialize in the flat event. Like, it would be like if Bolt was a hurdler or if well, but Wade Van Niekirk was a hurdler. The Bolt thing is a little different because it's just such a higher technical component True. with the high hurdles. 400 and 400 hurdles, especially, you know, with, with the heights being so much lower, they're kind of related, yeah. right? Like, it's hard. You can't be slow in the in the flat four and be good in the 400 hurdles. Not Especially not in this era now. Yeah. So, but I think you're right. I think she's an all-time great 400-meter runner who happens to also run the 400 meter hurdles and hopefully we'll see her in some flat 400s because who knows what she could do. I mean, you mentioned Sonia Richard Dross, 48, seven is the American record. That's so that's less, she has to run less than two seconds faster. The crazy thing about tonight was it wasn't shaping up to be that crazy fast of a night. I mean, Miller Rabel ran fast, but the rest of the times in the 400s weren't that fast. Men's side wasn't that fast. So you can kind of make a comparison to her and some of the 400 meter runners and where she stacks up with barriers constructed and 10 barriers constructed in front of her theoretically to slow her down. Although I don't know if that's true. Like they may actually make her quicker. So I, I, I do, I do agree with your point that we're just seeing somebody who's would be good at everything who happens to great at everything, but happens to be running the four hurdles where maybe once, once this record thing started, maybe there was margin to, to improve, right? Just as you could say, you know what? If all the all-time great 3,000-meter runners decided they were going to focus on the steeplechase, yeah. would the steeplechase record come down? I buy that argument in the short term, but this is like so far beyond that because now we're seeing her distance herself from everybody else and and encroach in on flat 400 territory. Like 50.68 is not a 400-meter hurdle time. I'm That's, sorry. It's, it's not. not. It's not. We need, we need to enter it as a 400 flat time. It needs to be like, it needs to be submitted for approval to like the almighty track powers that be like 50.6. You're not allowed to do that. It's not allowed allowed to be a 400 hurdle time. It's just not, I'm sorry. I mean, so it's basically, she, we're saying she's too fast for the 400 hurdles. She broke them. So she now needs, they need to either end the event or she needs to move over to the flat event. And she's, how can we go on living with 50.68 as a record, as a record? It's just, it, it cannot be. It, it cannot be. I mean, but it is, Kevin. Okay, so what's the only other event <laughs> where there's barriers in their way in the same distance? It's the women's side of things. I mean, imagine if the women's record in the high hurdles was like 10-9. You just be like, wait, what? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And it also puts those other people who are in the regular event to shame. Like, wait, oh, man. Like, I just, I can't believe it, man. I'm still <laughs> shocked. Um, 